up, it's Shankster94, and welcome to Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles Weapons Review. This is the first spin-off review I'm doing. It's not a main series title, and I have to say, the weapon system is pretty different. And since it's a rail shooter, you won't be seeing the weapons when I test them out and firing them on enemies. So, I'm kind of going to review this differently. I'm still gonna like fire the weapon three times, but I'm not gonna slow mo it on the third shot since you can't even see it. So why should I slow mo it? But I will slow mo the grenade launchers and the rocket launchers since you can see the projectile damage and the after effect. All right. Well, here's as you can see here, I'm on the weapons menu, and this makes the review so much easier since you have all the weapons with you right here. Of course, after you beat the game, you get all the weapons, pretty much. But you do have to find them as you play through the game, sort of. Um, and also, like Resident Evil 4, 5, and Revelations, etc., the weapons have upgrades, but they're, like, in levels. And you can't choose which upgrade, really. You have to go in order. The maximum level is level 4. Of course, until you beat the game in hard mode with an S rank on every scenario, then you unlock level 5, which is infinite ammo only. It's the only upgrade level 5 is. All the upgrades are like firepower, capacity, and the maximum ammo it could hold. Alright, well, let's get on with the weapons review. I will start with the weapons that you always have, which are the knife and, the, and grenades. So, let me get on to that. Alright, so here's how you use the knife. We're in here too. You we just, need to get out. You just have to hold A on the remote and slap like move it like a knife slashing motion. Out of here. You usually use it if zombies get up close and personal, or if, like, flying enemies are coming at you, like crows and bats. Alright, well, I will slow-mo that, as you already saw. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for the knife. Now the grenades, I believe, you hold B, and then press A to throw the grenade. Now you hold A and press B to throw it. Yeah, that's what the grenades do. Now those two weapons are good defense items and could get you out of a jam sometimes. I mean, maybe not the knife, but the grenade really. If there's a crowd, and in this game, you could use grenades to break a lot of items, which actually count towards your rank in this game, so you could also use it for that. Alright, well, that's it for those two, like, defensive weapons. Now to get on to the actual firearms. Now all these weapons are your secondary weapons. But your primaries don't show on this menu until you have chosen your character. The primary weapons are, are the handguns, of course. Now, I will review those first, and I won't go in any particular order, just what I feel is best. So, alright, let's get to the handguns. Okay, after you've chosen your character and you're on this weapon screen, you could see the, your primary weapon here. And see, this will be the first handgun I review. It is the Samurai Edge, and you can get it using Chris, Jill, Rebecca, or early in the game, Wesker. So yeah, and that, since you don't see me firing the weapon, it doesn't matter who I test it with. So just to clear that up. Alright, let's test the Samurai Edge out. Alright, now let's test it on an enemy. We're in here too! We need to get out. All right, so four shots for the Samurai Edge when you aim for the body. Now, the cool thing about the primary weapons is there are critical headshots, and if you aim the reticle at the zo like between the eyes of the zombie or most of the small enemies, and you could possibly get a he critical headshot. If you aim it just right, you could see you'll see a blinking dot on the center of your reticle. So let me show you that. Perfect. Alright, well, that's just the example of a primary weapon, but that's it for the Samurai Edge handgun. 
this reveal will be fast, since you can't see the weapon and I'm not doing slow-mo. So, there you go. Okay, in case it was too dark, I increased the brightness a little bit. But anyway, here's the next handgun. It's Billy's handgun. It's kind of like the Colt 1911, as I said in my Zero Weapons review. And yes, only Billy could use this gun, so let's review it. Alright, so three shots using Billy's handgun. Now, I am playing on easy mode, which is I know is kind of sad, but, like, I don't know this game as well as the main series titles, really. And I never tried any higher modes yet. And if any of you are veterans of this game, I don't know if a higher difficulty will uh, affect the amount of shots it takes to defeat a standard zombie. If it does, I'm sorry I'm doing it on the lowest mode, but I'm just not used to this game enough to risk trying a higher mode. Alright, but yeah, three shots for Billy's handgun. And this is like the very first scenario, so I wonder if that also is making it way too easy. I don't know. But anyway, that's it for Billy's handgun. Alright, now for the next handgun, which is this. You get this with Carlos, so I believe it's the Sig Pro from Resident Evil 3. All right, let's test it out. All right, so five shots from the Sig Pro. All right, so you can only get that handgun with Carlos on the third scenario. All right, well, that's it for the Sig Pro. The handguns do not have any upgrades, by the way, just to clear that out. Alright, now for the next handgun, the Beretta 93 Rafica. That's what it looks like anyway. And you get this handgun with Ada in her only scenario. Alright, let's look at it. I need to get out of here. It's a burst handgun, as you could see. Okay, well, I can't really control the enemy placement in this game. <laughs> so, I guess I'll say it takes 15 shots for a spider. <laughs> okay, and since they said for the primary weapons, I don't really need to be in-depth in with the details, I guess. Once again, if you're looking for an in-depth review of weapons, look for somebody else or make a video on your own, seriously. I mean, I'm very simple, and I'm gonna stay that way, so get used to it. But anyway... That's it for the burst handgun. You know what? I'll, I'll find a zombie to test it on, even though I just got a spider. I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, this is extremely weird, because that took 18 shots, which is more than a spider. Uh, unless I hit the critical spot a couple times on the spider. But, oh and all, the burst handgun is looking like one of the weakest pistols in the game. Then again, I did shoot the zombie's arm, and that barely does anything. Alright, reviewing the weapons, in terms of testing, might be a little complicated in this game, but the review should still go on pretty fast. So, alright, I am getting off Ada's what I am getting off the burst handgun now. Alright, next, next handgun! Alright, now for the next handgun, what looks like the Matilda... Or the VP-70 from Resident Evil 2. And you get this handgun with Hunk on his scenario. Alright, let's test it out. What happened to Bergen? He was injured in the firefight. I get contaminated in the air. We will have to contain him. Understood. I'll put in the request. What the hell are those things? Alright, so ten shots for the Matilda to kill a standard zombie. Alright. Okay, usually when you're using your handguns, you want to aim for that critical spot I was talking about. I'm just aiming for the chest to tell you how many shots it would take if you were a rookie, and that's where you were aiming, really. <laughs> that's all I'm doing. Alright, so... Shouldn't be a concern why it's taking so many shots. Usually it shouldn't take that many if you're aiming for the head. Alright, that's it for the Matilda. Alright, now for the last handgun. Wesker's Silent Pistol. This is basically the same pistol he had in Resident Evil 4. So yeah. Alright, let's review the last one. Alright, 
so nine shots with the silenced handgun. Alright, well, that finishes the handguns off. Now to get to the secondary weapons, which are, like, easier to review since they're like the weapons worth choosing. Alright, 